Hotel, Anguja Seneb. This is your Sarah Hotel from Hotep's Kitchen, Hotep's Bachelor Kitchen, because I do everything myself. I don't have to rely upon anybody else to do anything for me, right? So us men, men need to learn, young men, older men, you need to learn how to take care of your body. If you are going to um, live, you know, a good life, you know, uh, too many brothers is out here just drinking beer and wine and kibasiyay and thinking they living a good life and all they're doing is killing themselves. So I'm going to give you an alternative. So I think I got all my ingredients out here that I intend to use for today. Um, I'm going to talk about making smoothies so we made a smoothie yesterday and we're going to make another one today and the one we made yesterday we used almond milk today we're going to use orange juice fresh squeezed orange juice as the base okay and um i hope i have the camera at a different, little bit better angle this is my vitamix blender and you know again i always recommend that you um, invest your money into a good blender because making smoothies is a very efficient way of getting the nutrients from your food into your body. You're breaking it down into a way that is very easy to digest and easy to assimilate, okay? When we when we are consuming foods, the things that we have to cons that we have to think about is the process of how easily is that food going to be digested into our bodies. So digestion means that the food is going to be broken down into a state where it can then be absorbed into the body. So digestion means that you have to chew the food first, right? That's the first step in digestion. With a smoothie, you don't have to chew it because you're already it's already masticated in the blender. So that means it's broken up into a into a form where it can just go directly into your stomach, and then the process of a um, <clears throat> little bit further digestion, but actually more assimilation can take place within the stomach, right? And so uh, and then. And so, so, so within the stomach, you have digestion taking place in the form of a hydrochloric acid that breaks the food down into a form whereby it can then be absorbed. It can then be absorbed into the, um, into the you know, by the small intestines. So we talk about this whole area of your body right here, where you have your stomach, your small intestines, and then your colon, and this is where all, this is where all of the work is being is is taking place at. So, <clears throat> um, making a smoothie is really making your food in a way that is very easy to digest and very easy to assimilate. And so you're going to get the most you're going to get a tremendous amount of benefit from it. And because we're only consuming plant-based foods, you know, you hear people talk about raw foods. You hear some, yeah, they have some raw food, especially like in Hollywood. You have raw fooders who eat raw meat. And they say, oh, I'm going to eat raw meat because that's better for me and blah, blah, blah. But we're not worried about no raw meat. We eat raw fruits, raw juices, and raw other substances like our reishi mushroom, our spirulina, and our bee pollen. And I also got some herbs from Africa, which I'm going to introduce, you know, to you for energy. Okay. Every year we go to Af we go to Africa um, twice a year. We go to Egypt twice a year. We go to Ghana twice a year, and we go to Jamaica twice a year. And so when I'm on my travels. I'm finding different herbs and different things that you may not know about to bring back with me and to use in my um and to use in my uh, recipes. I even have a herb that um I forgot about it. 
I don't know if I'm going to use it because I've had it sitting. I've had so much of it. I had it sitting in my um, container. But this is baobab powder from the baobab tree. Okay. And um, excuse me for going off the camera a little bit because I'm trying to get it in the right place. But the baobab tree. B-A-O-B-A-B. -B -A -B, baobab. Okay. That's how, we, that's how we pronounce it in America. Baobab tree. But the um, <clears throat> this is a tree that has pods on it. And from those pods, you cut it open and it has seeds. And attached to the seeds is powder. And so they use this powder um, as a way of, for, for nutrition. And so we use this powder from the baobab tree in our smoothies. I'm not going to use this today, but I'm just letting you know. And this is something that you, you, you're not going to be able to find this in Whole Foods and places like that. I did this when I traveled through the markets. I go to the outdoor markets in Africa, in Ghana, in Gambia, Senegal, and places like that. And I get the baobab powder that the people are using. These are secret things or things which are not well known that people are using to heal themselves with, to keep themselves healthy, right? And so we don't hear about these things, but these are things that we need to know about, okay? So... <clears throat> We begin our smoothie with fresh orange juice, okay? And I got my computer here so I can keep my notes so that I can um, um, keep myself, um, you know, on the right track, right? So, um, why do we use orange juice, right? I love orange juice. I love all types of citrus juice, whether it's lemon, lime, orange, grapefruit. And I try to get all of my juices um, um, organically. And I use this juicer here. You know, I've invested in a nice citrus juicer. And I use this juicer, this type of juicer, to squeeze my citrus juices with, right? And so I've already squeezed the juice. So now we're just going to make it. But citrus juices are very high in vitamin C. Vitamin C stimulates the body's natural protective mechanisms and improves the functioning of the body in general. It protects against cancer and heart disease and is one of the most fundamental substances in the body. It takes place, it takes part in the most basic process is essential for life and good health, okay? This is what vitamin C does. Every biological, every biochemical process in your body involves vitamin C. Vitamin C is one of the water-soluble nutrients, along with B-complex, that your body does not store. So that means that you need to get vitamin C into your body in an abundant amount every single day. So that's why I eat fruits throughout the day. That's why I eat all these different things and invest my money into my fruits and into my vegetables, which are high in vitamin C, because you need this throughout your day. It fights cancer. We have so many men, so many um, people suffering from various types of cancer. We have men suffering from um, prostate cancer and so on and so forth. Um, you can take in these foods and you can prevent a lot of these cancers that people are, that, that people are getting, okay? Um, it prevents heart disease, okay? Foods that are high in vitamin C is going to be surprising. You have Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts are very high in vitamin C. A lot of people don't like Brussels sprouts, but when you cook Brussels sprouts, you don't cook them to death. You gotta find a way to steam them, or you could even eat Brussels sprouts raw if you learn how to prepare raw foods. So you need to study with somebody like Aris Latham, you know, who was, who, who was one of my teachers. You can learn how to make your Brussels sprouts raw. Broccoli okay, is high in vitamin C. Cauliflower, a vegetable which is high in vitamin C. Raw cabbage, high in vitamin C. Tomatoes, 
green peppers, and all your citrus fruits, like your oranges, your grapes, your limes, your grapefruit. Then you have um, grapes, you have uh, pineapple, strawberries, and you also have the famous kiwi fruit produced by my Maori friends in New Zealand, which I can't wait to return back to there to, um, you know, just to hang out with the Maori people in New Zealand, okay? So vitamin C, very important. Now, in addition to having vitamin C in my, in my juice itself, sometimes I want to use an added boost of vitamin C. So sometimes I may have some congestion. Sometimes I may have some um, lingering. Sometimes I've been flying on airplanes for 10, 12, 15 hours and the air conditioning, all that stuff is affecting my lungs, affecting my breathing, affecting my throat. So I might take some vitamin C mixed with some water. Sometimes I want to have a boost of vitamin C in my juice and in my smoothie because I want to activate the B complex. I want to activate the iron. Vitamin C boost the effectiveness of B-complex and allows your body to absorb iron more efficiently, to absorb B-complex more efficiently. More efficiently. So a lot of times people are suffering uh, from iron deficiency, especially um, females, right? You suffer from iron deficiency. They say you got iron poor blood and all that kind of stuff. Oftentimes they would give you a supplement, which if you was to crush it, it's a pill. You crush it up, you crush it, and you put a magnet next to it. You're going to see little fragments of iron actually being attracted to the magnet. This is not the type of iron that your body needs, right? So um, you need to get a natural source of iron. Your raisins, your figs, your dates, those are very high in iron, right? And but sometimes you also might want to have a boost of vitamin C. So I use a powdered vitamin C to boost and elevate the vitamin C in my natural juices, right? So I'm going to um, place about a quarter teaspoon or so of vitamin C powder into my juice. Just add a little extra boost to it, right? Sometimes, if, like I was saying about being on an airplane or not feeling that good uh, from flying and things like that or not getting enough sleep, I might put an extra boost or a teaspoon of vitamin C in my um, water or in some juice and just drink it. And you're going to feel your throat. You're going to feel your lungs. You're going to feel your bronchial passages start to open up. It's going to break up that mucus that's there. That's why I love to take my vitamin C every day in the form of some fresh juice, right? So vitamin C. The next thing we're gonna use in our smoothie is going to be our bee pollen. Okay, so when they say bee pollen, it's, it's the pollen from flowers. Bees simply go to the flower and they gather the, the powder uh, and they um, take the powder and they put it in a little pellet. Let me see if I can put this on there. It's a little ball, right? This, well, that fell. Um, <laughs> let me see. Maybe just get a little, a little finger full. Okay, you see that? This is this, this little granules of pollen. And so the bees basically just take the flower pollen, they take it and they bunch it together, squeeze it together, and they make these little pellets out of it. And then you take the, and then they take this to the to the hive and they make honey out of it. And they live off the of honey. They live off of the um the, the, the regular bees live off the road, live off the honey, and the queen bee live off of something called royal jelly. That they use to make the um that they that they use the pollen to make honey from. And I was just in Africa and I got this, which is some um 
which is some honey from the rainforest, right? And so this is some really strong, when I say strong, I mean it's very high in nutrients. That's what I mean by strong. So this is some, this is some honey from the continent. And you wanna get a lot of healing effects when you use this honey. I'm not gonna put this into the smoothie, but I'm just trying to give you some general knowledge and education about honey and about pollen. Because this honey that the bees made was made from this pollen, okay? Now, what is bee pollen? What is pollen? Flower pollen. The way I describe it, I say that it is the converted digestible sunlight. So it's taking the energy from the sun, it's being transformed into the pollen of the flower, it's being transformed into the body of the plant. But the pollen is the reproductive material of the plant. Different insects, especially bees, they go from one flower to the next. And that's how the flowers have sex because the, because the bee and other insects are taking the flower, taking the pollen and germinating one, each of the different plants. So we are taking in this material, this very um, powerful material into our bodies and we absorbing it and we using it to build the flesh and bone and the blood and the nervous tissue and the organ tissue of our bodies. Think about that. So this is converted sunlight. It's the re it's it's reproductive raw material of plants. Pollen has 250 active substances. It has antibiotics, antioxidants, B complex vitamins. It has all 21 amino acids. It's easy to digest and assimilate. It strengthens the blood vessels of your body. It strengthens your blood vessels and it's good for stamina. So that's one of the reasons when I get finished making this drink, I'm going to take my bike ride. I'm going, to, I'm going to go about 30 miles on my bike. I'm not going to have no food. I'm not going to have nothing but water with me. And I'm going to exist off of this, um, off of this, um, smoothie that I'm going to make with my superfoods. Okay. Now, what are some of the additional properties of bee pollen? It protects from chronic disease. It reduces bad cholesterol. It protects against heart disease and cancer. It protects the liver from toxins. It's anti, it has anti-inflammatory properties, antibacterial properties. It's a wound, it has wound healing. Remember in, um, in, in the movie with Denzel Washington, where he's playing the brother who's protecting, you know, he's protecting people and he gets injured and he takes some honey and he warms it up and then he pours the honey on his, on his wound, right? The Equalizer, that's the name of the movie. And so he's, he's showing you right there, he's using honey to heal his injury to his body. They have found honey in, the, in, in, you know, in tombs in ancient Kemet that was still able to, to look, you know, look similar to this. That was still, you know, not, I'm going to say fresh because it's thousands of years old, but it's, but it's, but it hasn't desiccated. It hasn't deteriorated. It's still pretty much good. Okay. So it has antibacterial, it has wound healing, it has anti-cancer properties. It aids in menopause, okay? So my sisters, some, some people are going through menopause, right? And so your, um, your, your, your body, your body's going through menopause, you wanna start taking your bee powder and make this smoothie, right? My sister, Matisha Suda, She's working with women who are going through menopause. She has a retreat for women who are de who are going through the different uh, changes that, that can come about through menopause. 
and you also have male menopause too. So males start to go through different physiological and psychological changes as they move through the different stages of life. And so this is helping both men and women, okay? It, it helps with um, nutrient utilization, so it helps you to absorb other nutrients. It helps with metabolism, and it also helps with longevity, okay? So therefore, we're gonna take our bee pollen. You could use one tablespoon to a teaspoon, a teaspoon to a tablespoon. I'm gonna use a hearty teaspoon in my smoothie, okay? Just one teaspoon because I'm putting in a lot of other stuff in there. And so I don't wanna overload it with one particular thing, right? Another major ingredient that's gonna go into this smoothie is going to be our spirulina. And so you see that my that a lot of stuff I buy comes from Whole Foods because it's close to my house and I can just go to one place and buy it. Whole Foods, when they came into Chicago market, they knocked all the other health food stores out of the out of the um out of the box. And even if you, even if you can find a different health food store, a lot of the products that I like to buy cost more. But you can buy spirulina online if you choose to. That might be the most economical way, okay? Or if, but if you can find a local black-owned health food store or indigenous people-owned health food store, then you should get that, okay? So spirulina, what is spirulina? Spirulina is blue-green algae. It comes, it's grow, it grows on the surface of water, like in fresh lakes. Okay, it's grown throughout Africa. It's grown throughout Mexico and Central America and South America in the fresh water. People have been using spirulina. It's a one cell plant organism. And people have been using this for, 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 for thousands and thousands of years. And by it being a one cell plant organism, it is at the, it is, it, it is the, um, it is at the base of the food chain for the entire planet Earth. This right here, this spirulina. Spirulina protects from um, protects from medicine byproducts. So if you're taking different types of medicine, spirulina is going to help to protect you from some of those negative side effects. It has it's full of vitamins and minerals. It's great for cell regeneration. Um, it's a great protein source. So all your amino acids is here. So you don't have to eat a steak. You don't have to eat a, a piece of beef or a piece of fish or a piece of chicken. Muscle, eat, eat muscle, muscle mass from, a, um, from, from some animal. You can get protein from this. You can get protein from your um, bee pollen. You know, I, I, I am... I, I, I'm a vegan. I'm six foot two. I weigh 250, 215 pounds. I don't need, I, don't, I haven't had any meat in almost 50 years. You don't need that to have a body, okay? Now, um, this is easy to digest. It's a superfood. It's antifungal. It's anti-aging. It fights against cancer and it's an antibacterial. Antibacterial. Okay, now in this chart, which you can't see, but I'm gonna read it to you. It's comparing spirulina with other forms of protein. You can take milk. They tell you to drink milk. They say milk makes your body grow and get strong and you need milk for calcium. Most of, the, most of the countries in the world that have high consumption of cow's milk, they have high levels of osteoporosis. That means that the, you, you see people with their backs hunched because their spine has deteriorated because they have not absorbed the, nutri, the, the, the calcium, right? Spirulina has 14 times more calcium than milk. The calcium in milk is not utilizable because of the fact that the milk itself is acidic. And so the milk itself actually 
drains your body of calcium, okay? Spirulina has four times more potassium than bananas, okay? So that's why I can take this substance. I take a teaspoon or a tablespoon of this into my body in my smoothie, and I can go ride my bike and my muscles are going to work because I'm utilizing um, the potassium that it has. It has two times more protein than yogurt, okay? It has two times more vitamin A, two times more vitamin A than carrots, four times more fiber than oats, okay? Spirulina, okay? I've been, I take this air almost every single day. I've been taking it every day for almost 50 years, okay? It's blue-green algae. It's a one-cell plant organism. It's, it's, um, it's a simplified reproduction of solar energy. This is solar energy that your body can actually absorb and use. You hear people talk saying that they're gonna go out into the sun and they say they're gonna do sun game, they're gonna look at the sun. They say that they're gonna lay in the sun and let the sun be absorbed into their body. All of that stuff is good. But you need to also take the spirulina internally to get that into your body, right? Um, you get all your amino acids, all your B-complex vitamins, you get your tryptophan, which supports your serotonin, reduces mood disorders, controls diabetes, and has antitoxic activity. Okay? Spirulina benefits. Spirulina is very high in many nutrients, powerful antioxidants, and anti-inflammatory. It can lower LDL. LDL is low, low um, density lipoprotein. So LDL is the bad type of cholesterol. When people, all people often hear the term cholesterol, they say, oh, cholesterol is bad. Low density lipoprotein, I mean low density, um, low density, um, yeah, lipoprotein is LDL. That's the bad type of cholesterol. The good cholesterol is your HDL, your high density lipoprotein. So for example, your flaxseed oil, this is fat, but it's high density plant fat from, from plants. If you eat a piece of beef, if you eat a piece of chicken, you are taking in LDL. When you eat plants, you are taking in HDL. That's the good stuff. So that's what you got to think about. You got to start using your mind and stop thinking, oh, I got to eat all of this um, animal stuff in order to keep my muscle mass, right? Um, <clears throat> so on and so forth. Okay, this helps to reduce your blood pressure and it's effective against anemia. Okay, so you're gonna get your iron, you're not gonna be anemic if you start to take your spirulina on a regular basis. Now that's just two Two things we talked. That's just three things we talked about so far. We talked about the orange juice and the vitamin C. We talked about the um, the um, bee pollen, and we talked about now the spirulina. So I'm going to take my spirulina. And my bag is almost empty. I'm just going to pour some in there. And what you and as you can see, I'm going to pour it all in there. Just get rid of it. So as you can see, this is a deep green. A lot of people that I run into, they, they, they look at something that's deep green and they get, oh my God, oh, that don't look good. It looks nasty because it's green. But they'll eat something that's blue or um, purple or pink or some kind of color that doesn't even exist in the plant world, but they won't take something that's green. Green means life. Green is the sun. Green means chlorophyll. Anything that's green, it has converted sunlight in it. And so the sun is a source of everything. The sun is a source of life. Source of life. The sun is raw. Okay? So we got our bee pollen, our spirulina. We got our vitamin C. I'm going to put some reishi, reishi mushroom in here. 
I don't have my, I don't have my, um, I don't have my, um, I don't have my research, um, at my fingertips right now for the, um, for, for the Rishi mushrooms, but, um, you got to think about the fact that these are fundamental, um, um, nutrients that your body needs. Okay. So the Rishi mushroom, this is an imparted form. It's for stress and it's for your, the health of your immune system. Okay. Next, we're going to put our strawberries. And as you heard me talk about before, your, your berries are going to have your um, resveratrol, which is from the pigment in the berry. We're going to have our blueberries. And remember, get organic and either freeze them yourself or get them already frozen. But they must be organic. And so we got uh, chunks of mango. Put those in there. Now, what I almost forget is my little powders from Africa. So I get this when I go to Ghana from a hospital, from a herbal research center called Malpalm. And it, they call it aphrodisia powder because they consider it to be something that's good as an aphrodisiac that stimulates your desire and for, for, for sexual or intimate contact and also increases your energy and your ability in that area for both men and women, right? But the thing about it is that this is good for everything if you like to run, if you like to jog, if you like to work out, you like to ride your bike, if you just like to have a strong mental state, to be alert, have good focus and concentration, you should take this, okay? And, I, I, and at, at a later, at another time, I'll go into it, all the stuff that's in here. But this is uh, something I use in my smoothie, and I use it because not for sex, but because it gives me endurance when I'm working out. It gives me endurance when I'm riding my bike. It's good for my adrenal glands, right? And so on and so forth. So I'm gonna put my aphrodisia powder in it. And like I said, at a later time, I, I'll try to do a more extensive video about this because it's something you can't really get. This is called tiger nut. And so tiger nut is another one that they use um, um, for energy, for strength, and so on and so forth. I'm going to put a little bit of tiger nut powder in there. Okay. And um, I'm going to take my uh, flaxseed oil. I'm going to put that in there for some emulsification. I'm going to take my mango, not my mango, my kiwi fruit. And I'm sure people see me cutting this kiwi and, and not using the, the whole kiwi. I'm just gonna put the whole thing in there, including the um, skin, okay? Because why not? Some people ask me, why do you peel it? Well, I washed it thoroughly. I'm gonna try to see how it's gonna react with just the, the peel of it too. So that's why, also that's why I invested a really good blender so I can break all this stuff down. Okay, so I have it in my blender. I'm going to set it on smoothie because this is an auto automatic blender. And so you can get one that's manual or you can get an automatic one. Put it on there, turn it on.
I think this um I think this particular blender it calculates on its own how how long it needs to blend in order to um break down the um the foods that's contained in the blender. So you can see this is really green. Some people might say, oh that looks nasty, blah blah blah. I really don't want to hear all that stuff because it's just silly. This is nutrient. It doesn't taste bad. People think they can look at something and tell how it tastes. It does not taste bad. It tastes good. This is the bomb. This is the Smizam Bizam, as we say in Chicago. Mm. So I'm about to drink this. I'm gonna jump on my bike. I'm gonna do, maybe I'm gonna do 30 miles, but I'll do at least 20 miles. And um, try to get my body into better shape as I recover from my trips that I've been taking in Africa and stuff. I'm trying to get my um, body clock back in tune to, um, you know, for the, t for the time change and stuff like that. So I'm on my program, okay? My birthday, this is, um, what day is this? This is um, August 26, 27. My birthday is October 17th. So I got two months to start working on myself to get in really high quality, really high level um, health and fitness for my birthday. So that's what I'm working on. That's what I'm trying to get myself back in tune. So hotel. Um, Uja Sanel, listen, learn, and um, don't believe the hype. Get your real stuff and do your thing. Hotel.